a new line of law enforcement is here. Here's your look at new nacelle, very important toy, RoboForce Max 89. Max 89 was destined to be the latest and greatest in law enforcement. He was literally built to do it. But on the day before his first patrol, the Utopia 101 line was revealed to the world. Max 89 was quietly reassigned to the traffic beat. Despite his best efforts to conform, Max's passion for true crime fighting, along with his growing distrust of Utopia 101, led Max down a path to other unauthorized lines of police work. This would create problems. A lot of problems. Max 89 returns as part of the very important toy line from the Nacelle Company. This very important toy line is a deluxe articulated 7.5 inch tall action figure packaged in its own graphene inspired collector friendly window box. Just before we get things started, first I'd like to thank the folks over at the Nacelle Company who did provide a new take on a retro robo toy line by providing the Max 89 that we can have a look at in this review. It is slated to release in December 2022, so it should start to show up soon in online stores if you guys are interested to pick one for yourself. Grabbing the tape measure, though, we're going to first figure out how tall Max 89 stands by taking the tape measure, as I always do. Max 89 stands 7 and a quarter inches in height, or the figure's 19 centimeters tall. Max 89 here is actually based on Max Steel, the original leader of the RoboForce, a line of toys produced by CBS Toys back in the day. Many of you, perhaps my age, may have even collected these when you were younger. I may have had one or two of the RoboForce toys. Essentially, what Nacelle has done now is taken the licensing and produced brand new articulated figures with a lot of still inspirations to the original toy line. Something that the new toy line now gets is a whole bunch of cool accessories. Some of which, of course, all of which we'll have a look at in the review first. First of which, you get yourself a couple of these little hose attachments. Now, you can decide for yourself exactly what each one of these do. One looks like it could be some sort of spotlight. Perhaps one uses a freeze blast. Either way, you can decide for yourself. You can use your imagination. There is also one that clearly looks more to be like a cannon than anything else. I do, do like the use of the dark gunmetal gray that they have here, the gold here, and on the end of the nozzle of the cannon. And all of these attach to the same way. If you look at the bottom of them, they all have these rectangular pegs. If you pick up the toy, though, and flip around Max 89, located here on the back, you'll see a port here on his shoulder, and you'll see a port here on the back of his body as well, on the back of his torso. So you can decide for yourself. You just simply plug those in. You'll see right away, they only go a certain way. So you can't have this, for example, twisted this way. You'll just plug it into the top, take the other one, and plug it into the top of the shoulder here. I looked around to it and see if there was any other place where I could plug these. And there's, of course, three of them. Now, this one doesn't plug as well. This one's a little more of the thicker side. But again, like, for example, you could take the cannon, for example, and just plug it onto the shoulder. I may want to use, I would suggest, some hot water. Just maybe soften up the peg just a little bit so it fits a little bit better in. But as I said, there was three of them available. I don't see an actual third port anywhere on Max 89 where you could plug in the extra one. The images I did see online had one onto the side here, but I didn't notice anything on the leg, at least something that would recognize, at least I would recognize as an available port. If there is another one on here, I'm sure I'll, I'll soon enough find where it would be. But in the meantime, at least you can plug two in or decide later on if you want to swap the cannon out for this one instead. Simply just attach them onto the back of the figure's body. Just going to go and remove those for right now. The figure also comes included with a claw. Similar to the design of these ones currently in the sockets of the forearms, although this one you'll notice right away does have a longer pair of blades. The hands, luckily, are very easy to remove. Simply just hold on to the forearm here, and you'll get uh, basically just like a little plunger. These will plug back into place, and when you remove them, normally it has... Let me just plug this one in and see if I can do it. When you plug them in, super easy. When you remove them, they were popping earlier. I found that was kind of satisfying. But the hands are extremely easy to change. Uh, you only get the one hand, so you're only going to be able to change it to the one side. I suppose technically you could spin this around and simply just have it on this side as well. The last of the accessories that the figure comes included with is a gun. Uh, hopefully it's going to be standing. One of the problems I do have ultimately, though, with Max 89 is that he does have, have, have some difficult time to stand. We'll talk more about that in a moment. 
In the meantime, though, he does also have himself a side handgun, very similar, in fact, to the one that actually plugs onto his body. You can see, like, the cannon design is very, very similar in design, although this one's just a little bit bigger. This does fit into his hand. When fitting into his hand, though, there is just enough allotted space between the main finger area and, I guess, what you would consider to be the robot's thumb. When you do put it in, just be careful. You kind of have to wiggle it back and forth to eventually get it into his grip. And of course, because the figure now has all this additional articulation, you can easily get him in some pretty cool looking poses. To remove the gun might be a little harder to do. You kind of have to wiggle it back and forth till eventually it gets itself free from the grip. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth like this. There we go. And then eventually that gets removed. We can put that to the side. Now, again, like it's very heavily influenced by the original Max Steel. Uh, some of the more designs I recognize right away is obviously the chest panel piece here, which I think they've actually matched the colors rather nicely. The orange, the off mustard yellow, the blue, the yellow, and then the orange. Very much exactly the same colors as the sticker that was applied originally on the RoboForce Max Steel. They have, of course, taken a lot of the other colors that were on the original toy, like the blues, for example, notably on the shoulders, a lot of the black that would have been also in the arms, and also the majority of the body being more, sort of this off-white color. Of course, they have gone and run with the idea as well, incorporating some additional articulation. Max Steel would have been most, mostly an all-body, all one singular body with the arms and then the head up the top. Getting a closer look so at the, he so at the head, so you can actually see what's going on here. really do like the head sculpt. It's updated, but still enough recognizable here that I knew right away it was from the original RoboForce line. I might have even had Max Steel as a kid, but there is definitely articulation. You can rotate the head all the way around. Uh, it doesn't look to be like it's on a ball joint, so it's only going to be just simply rotating the head all the way around. And of course, there's all this other art articulation going for it as well. Some really nice details done to this. Sculpted in, they put in the hoses, some nice additional blue, again, reminiscent of the original toy line from RoboForce, and some nice additional yellow that they've added to not only the boots, but also into the shoulder area here as well. Everywhere you see on this robot, there's a lot of cool detailing that Nacelle was able to put into the piece. And there's, all again, a lot of articulation that we'll get more into in a moment. My only critique for the figure is the way they constructed the feet. The feet themselves are, are actually suction cups. They put them on the bottom of the robot's feet. It, for all intents and purposes, if you were to say put it on a smooth surface, the suction cups would be enough to normally hold the robot. Unfortunately, under the conditions I have right now with this backdrop, there's not enough smooth surface for these suction cups to hold onto. And when you've got so much of the weight of the robot being higher up like this, the robot teetered and tottered quite a lot. In fact, it actually sits only on a ball joint. So because of that, the weight is always resting and rocking against the ball joint or against the ball socket where these suction cups were attached inside the feet. You could technically remove the feet, but essentially what you'd just be left behind is sort of a hollow cavity on the inside. And the robot would be a lot shorter, of course, designed. One thing I do wish though that Nacelle could have done when it came to Max 89 here was maybe have a pair of swappable feet. Ones that if you weren't so crazy about the idea of having suction cups like this, simply just yank these off and replace them with more blockier feet. Something that would be stabilizing the toy just a little bit better. I don't know if you can even see, but just to rest it down. See how he already teeters and totters. There's so much weight happening here to the top that it really does cause problems when it comes to the robot standing. You can get him to balance and you think he may balance for a while you start to see he starts to lean and then eventually the figure falls over so i do wish that's one thing that they could have changed i do like the way they've updated design and certainly love the way they've added some additional articulation a lot more than original max steel would have had but i do wish that they could have incorporated something different instead of using suction cups suction cups works for a gimmick but i don't think for having the figure displayed for long periods of time i would have really rather instead them have two options maybe have the suction cup for those that wanted to have it or and then have the option where you could pop these off and replace them with blockier, more stabilizing feet instead. For the articulation, there's actually quite a lot going on here for Max 89. We're going to start things first, of course, with the head sculpt, which does allow the robot to rotate its head all the way around. Again, it seems to be only just a single peg. So you're not going to be able to hinge it up. You're not going to be able to have it looking down. It's pretty much just a straight rotation. The shoulders, on the other hand, do a rotate all the way around. They do queak, squeak, they do creak, but they do rotate all the way around. But there is also a ball joint, so those arms can technically as well move outward. When it comes to the arms themselves, you can rotate them at this, what you would consider, I guess, to be the bicep section of the robot. It does rotate back and forth. A very generous single hinge on the elbow going from the straight arm 
to a full beyond the point of a 90 degree angle bend. The hands as well rotate all the way around. I was hoping again I'd be able to see if I can do this right now. Now, see, now it's not doing anymore. It was popping, and I always found it was a little more satisfying. The waist does rotate back and forth. Yes, it does. Technically, yeah, you can rotate it all the way around, really, if you wanted to. The legs, like the shoulders, are on ball joints. So, again, you can bring those legs out. That's as far of a splits as you can really be able to pull off here on Max 89. You can then take the legs and move them forward. They are a little on the louder side, and you can also squeak them backward as well. There's a mild swivel as well, but as you're swiveling this, you're going to notice it's going to be squeaking like a mouse. There's a double hinge, or a single hinge, I should say, on the knee here, but then there's a secondary hinge at the front. So technically, it doesn't hinge as far back. That's what the lower joint is for, but this does allow the leg, to, the leg at least to hinge forward if you really want to. Uh, there is no any additional articulation past that point, but again, we do have the suction cups located on the back of the or on the bottom of the figure's feet. Which again is the only thing I would have said I would have done differently for it. I do really like the way that Nacelle has updated the original RoboForce toy line. I swear I really had this original toy when I was growing up, but I don't even know its whereabouts now. I do like the look of it. I do like the way they've updated the design of it. While it's still enough, enough of it is recognizable to the original toy line and the original Max Steel. The only thing again I would have said is just I would have changed the suction cups just because like again there's so much weight being added to the plastic it's a good heavy toy but with the suction cups being the only thing that's stabilizing the robot the robot's always going to have a tough time at least I've had a tough time trying to get him to properly stand on the turntable it wasn't so bad because the turntable is good and smooth but when you have a coarser backdrop like I do there's not enough smooth surface for those suction cups to hold on to and because of that poor Max 89 has taken a tumble more times than I can count the RoboForce Max 89 figure by the Nacelle company is slated to release December 2022 just looking at the neighboring calendar here, seeing as we're pretty late to the end of, Jan of December anyways, it's likelihood that they're probably going to be starting to ship these in early January 2023 instead. By the way, FYI, the price point for the RoboForce Max 89 is $55, and many of the online sites have been checking around as the pre-orders are available right now in various online sites. I think for what you're getting here, with the figure being very weighted plastic, super articulated, and with the amount of accessories that the figure comes included with, I think $55 is a really great price, especially if you're one like myself that may have collected the RoboForce toys growing up. Still wish I had a couple of those I could have brought out for comparisons. I swear I had Max Steel, where its whereabouts, though, remain unknown. I really like the designing of this. I really like also the way that Nacelle updated the design while still sticking to a lot of the core elements that made Max Steel so recognizable. A lot of times when you saw them at garage sales or other kids toy collections back then the only thing i would have then done differently again when it comes to max 89 here is not adding suction cups on the bottoms of his feet they do wreak havoc when it comes to a figure that's weighted that the figure is going to fall forward and back a lot of the times and there's a lot of parts of this review i actually had to reshoot simply just because max Steel kept falling forward on me i do wish that they could have possibly swapped out the feet so instead of just using straight suction cups they could have maybe had an option we could have popped off the suction cups and used Bricked, bricked feet instead. Big blocky feet to guarantee that the robot wasn't going to be falling over on you. I like the gimmick of using suction cups, but I think with a robot of this weight and this much articulation, it's not the greatest so solution for a figure that you want to have always standing straight on your shelf. Granted, on a smoother surface, he may fare a little bit better. On a spinning rotisserie, is probably a no-no. And certainly on my backdrop, which is just vinyl anyways, there really is enough smooth of a surface for the robot to stay su suctioned against. Other than that, I just really like the look of this one, and we are, in fact, going to be looking at another RoboForce in an upcoming review. Once again, I'd like to thank the folks over at Nacelle that did provide the sample of the brand new RoboForce Max 89. What do you guys think of this figure? Let me know down below in the comments section, and were you one of those kids growing up that collected the original RoboForce toy line from CBS Toys? Also, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, why hit with a like? If you're loving the content you're seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.